this time, it is going to be my pleasure to introduce the moderator for the Disney panel. Some of you may be familiar with him, Mr. Chris Hardwick of The Nerdist. Hello, everybody. Hello, 6,000 people. footage from the screen and upload it to Usenet or whatever you damn kids do these days. Um, this is uh, really exciting. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of great stuff to show you. We're going to have to sail through this pretty quickly. Well, I'll do my best to try to get to Q&A uh, after each person comes out. But um, let's get started. So there's a very impressive... Uh, Tim Burton. I don't... I mean, seriously. There's a guy... I mean, I put scissor hands, I before Christmas, Alice in Wonderland, and the first Tim Burton movie I ever saw was, uh, was Beetlejuice in the theater, because I'm elderly. And it totally changed my, the way that I thought a movie could be done. And he's managed to do that time and time again. Uh, but before we bring Tim out, uh, we have a very exclusive piece of Frankenweenie, which we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to shut up and let's roll it. This hey. director's chair. That guy loves you, Tim. He just said so. Uh, congratulations. I'm taken, sorry. <laughs> hey, but I see you, uh, you're alone tonight. Um, so, this is, uh, this is a very special movie uh, for you, Frank and Weenie. So just give people a little bit of background on where this came from uh, in the 80s. Well, um, it was actually one of the first shorts when I first started working at Disney. I got to do it in live action because I was a really bad animator. So they let me try live action, which was great. I got to, you know, I had to learn how to talk to people for the first time and deal with actors and things. So it was very, very, very special for me. And, uh, you know, it stemmed from, you know, having a dead dog when I was a child, and uh, you know the, 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 that sort of special uh, first relationship you have with a pet, and then you know always loving like monster movies and Frankenstein stories, and so it just seemed like a good connection to be able to do it in stop motion, in black and white, 3D is very special. I mean, you, you, uh, this, this, like the signature Tim Burton thing is this, this amazing horror background, kind of being at the crossroads of like of comedy and a little bit of satire and stuff too. So, what, you know, what, what are some of your comedy, what's some of your comedy background as well that kind of that took you down this path? Uh, growing up in Burbank, I guess. <laughs> Hilarious Burbank, <laughs> the comedy capital of the world. Uh, no, I don't know. I just, you know, it's a nice. It, 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 I just wanted to mix all those kind of elements, the horror, the humor, the heart of the story, and, 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 and you know, for me, being I love stop motion, so it's a, a way to go back and deal with that, and so it just is a very special, personal project for me. I almost think stop motion is getting to the point where it's as special now as it was when people first started doing it, because so many things are CG now, that when you see stop motion you go, wow, they really took a chance, because this is, you know, this is a unique... Well, I mean, the old forms are great, the computers stuff is great, uh, drawn animation is great, uh, but this particular project just seemed right to have puppets, and, and also just, it's nice to kind of be able to shoot it, and you know, it's like... A, it's like little sets, you know, and yeah. you shoot it like a live action film. So it, it, it just, it, and the puppets are so tactile. They're so amazing to feel and to touch. And, and you know, it just connects you with the process. When uh, when you made the short in 1984, was your ultimate plan like, someday I want to blow this out into a movie? I mean, did it take that long for this to happen? or did? No, I mean, it, it was originally designed to go out with, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, an animated film like Pinocchio. And when we showed the short, the... Uh, Everybody got all freaked out, and then they watched Pinocchio, and half the audience kids were screaming, leaving. The, 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 I mean, I think people forget that Disney films are founded on you know kind of stuff that's got heart and stuff that's a bit scary and all that sort of thing. So, you know, for me, it's the perfect Disney movie. This one. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, a few clips to show people, and then and then we'll take a little bit of Q and A. So, do you want to set up the next? Yeah. Clip? Well, uh, this is sort of just I think a classroom scene. You know, I was able to kind of remember all the strange kids I went to school with and strange teachers and uh, kind of stuck them all into the movie. You think some weird guy now is like, hey, that's me when I was a kid, damn you, Tim Burton. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So we're gonna roll the clips. Before we do, put on your 3D glasses and let's roll another clip from Frank. 3D glasses. 3D. I just like that it's a collection of like every kid is kind of weird, like you said. Like it's not like one weird kid and a bunch of normal kids. Like every kid is uniquely weird. Well, it's like in those movies, like there was the original Frankenstein, all that, but then they did all those like movies where they, like House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, where they put like a, you know Frankenstein meets the Wolf Man, and they yeah. sort of stuck them all into one movie. So it kind of kind of follows that sort of formula a little bit. I mean, for, I think everyone would agree that vampires and werewolves should never meet, uh, like in the previous panel. Especially um, if one of them is a cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I want to have time for a little bit of audience Q&A, so you have one more clip uh, that you brought with you. Yeah, this is just another clip. It's another little monster-making moment. Okay, cool. <laughs> Roll it! Put on the 3D glasses! Thanks, Ace. Hi, how's Awesome. Hi, hello, team. I'm a huge fan of you. My name is Leo. I'm from Brazil, and I love all of your movies. Scissor Hand, Alice. I, I only have one question: Are you too tired to work with Johnny Depp? <laughs> wow. There are all directors. No. <laughs> First of all, I love Scissor Hand, Alice. That was a great movie that I wanted to mention as well. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yes, I moved on to dogs and little puppet characters <laughs> moving up in the world. Okay. Is this the best Brazil has to offer? No, we also have monkeys. <laughs> oh, monkeys. Yes. All right. I'm sold. We have like a smoking monkey butler or something? That'd be really awesome. Damn you and your sucker, Brazil. That was, that was really rewarding, Tim. I think we all felt that. That was very special. Hello. 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 Oh Hi. my god. Oh wow. Oh, look at you guys. Holy crap, you guys look amazing. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Nerd Halloween. <laughs> you guys look great. Thank you. You guys look better than they did in the movie. <laughs> Thank you. Stop back on yourself. Uh, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Fox and the Hound and Pee-wee's no, Big Adventure. No, no, don't blame me on Fox and the Hound. I like to do that. Pee-wee and Beetlejuice. But my question is, do you prefer making original stories like Nightmare, Beetlejuice, and Frank Weenie, or recreating characters like Barnabas, Victoria, and Willy Wonka? Well, no, I love all, you know, you, you, you spend a lot of time with these characters, so, you know, you love them all, and then, and, you know, there's something special in each one, and, you know, you try to treat each one, and I've been mean, looking at you guys, it looks, you know, it's great, it makes me feel like my family has come to see me. <laughs> does it ever get, does it, does it, do, do you, is it so weird for you? I mean, like, that's a thing that came out of your brain, and now it's all manifested itself right there. Is that still, is it still weird for you? No, my, my brain has already been leaked out. It's just <laughs> an empty shell at the moment. <laughs> you guys look great. Thank you. Was there another question? Or are you... Oh, yes, yeah, so stand up the microphone. Hi, t hi Tim. Ooh. Uh, Colleen Atwood is my idol, and I was wondering what... Right? Right? Let's hear it for Colleen. Um, what's it like to work with her? Because I love her. She's a bitch. <laughs> so long, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, that's the thing on films, you try to surround yourself with artists that, are, that, that, that surprise you. Yeah. That is so amazing. So I need to see a doctor about that. <laughs> um, no, but she's great, honestly, it's like, it's like somebody, you like to work with people that surprise you, and she's definitely one that, that, that you know, it's like working with a great artist. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you have a... Oh, one more. Oh, that's... Oh, microphone. Okay, no more. All right. All right, bye. Well, see you. Uh, next question. Hi. 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 Um, I'm a huge fan, and I was just wondering, do you ever have dreams that you incorporate in your scenes and parts of your films? Oh, that's a good question. Funny enough, I don't really have a nightmare, but I always used to have a dream about going to school, which is like was like a nightmare. So, it, 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 what did they do to you there? <laughs> There's still lawsuits pending. Okay, yeah, we, legally we can't talk about it. Was it? Oh, oh, okay. All right, yay! Uh, what's your name and question? My name is Anna. 
I was just wondering, were there scenes in the original film that you couldn't do because of limitations and you were able to realize in the animated version? Like, was this sort of the animated version of your original idea, or is this completely new? Well, no, I mean, it, it took the basic thing, basic story, but, like, expanding it to a film, I got the opportunity, because, like I said, I, there were other characters, the kids, the other monsters, the teachers, the, the little things that could explore further, so, um, and also, I think, just, it, like I said, I was happy to do it in live action, it was great, it was a lot of fun, it was a new experience for me, but, for me, this is the way, the more pure version of it. So, in that particular case, it's probably you know more more pure for me. Thank you. Uh, next question. <laughs> Do you know what this means? <laughs> anyway, Jesus, um, H Jedi. <laughs> Tim Burton had an amazing question for you. I've been wondering a really long time about it. I'm a huge fan of Beetlejuice, obviously. I grew up with it. My question is, it's rated PG, but they do say the F word in it. I was wondering how you got that through the Raiders. What, that? No, in Beetlejuice. When yeah. he says nice F and model, he kicks it over. He's one. This guy say, knows. You can say it once. You can say it once in a PG film. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, fine. I, I mean, although now, I don't know if you can say that even... I mean, back then you could say it once. Lots, yeah. lots of love, man. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. I love that he just wanted to know about the F-word thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, if everybody Tim Burton, I'm going to ask him how he got the F-bomb in uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> Anything about any other movies? <laughs> nah, just that one thing. Just that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your name, sir? Hi, I am Steven. Uh, I just want to say uh, you're an inspiration to me, and it's... it's uh, Honor to meet you. I'm trying not to geek out right now. <laughs> okay, so you're my safe zone. You geek out as much as you want. All right. That's why we're all here. <laughs> all right, all right, safe place, safe place. Okay, so my question is: Are you ever going to go back to darker tone films like Sleepy Hollow and uh, uh, Sweeney Todd? Because I love that. Well, yeah, I mean, I have my moments of light and dark, you know. Uh, uh, See, my problem is I never th think things are that dark. I, I, I find sometimes things that are lighter seem darker to me. So I'm like the worst person to ask. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right, thanks. One, one more question. We have time for one more question. Hi. Hi, Tim. I Hi. just wanted to say you're my biggest inspiration of all time. And I just wanted to know how does it feel to finally finish a project you had started, like, so many years ago? Oh, so sweet. No, it, 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 no. I mean, I feel like you do. I, when I think about it, I start to cry myself. So, in fact, I think, I think every movie I burst out into tears <laughs> for lots of different reasons. But uh, it, 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 it does mean a lot to me. And I, I and, and like you know, they're all kind of special. But this one definitely is, is special for me. And, and thank you very much for your question. Thank you. I hope I could work. Someday with you. Well, thank you. You sound like you've got a lot of nice emotion. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I mean, I like emotional. I think that's really funny. She was like, How did you get the F bomb? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. So, I do, I do, yes, yes, Jedi Salute. Uh, I do want to make a point to say that if you want to see an exclusive behind the scenes uh, look at the art from the film, uh, you can go to the Art of Frank and Weenie exhibit, which is at booth 3635, and I believe you're doing a signing there today at 545. It's really cool, you should see it, because it's yeah. all the puppets and stuff. It's actually have the puppets there, so if you text SPARKY, S-P-A-R-K-Y, to 66937, you can get a chance to win a ticket to this exclusive Tim Burton signing later today at 545. Please help me thank Mr. Tim Burton for being here.